What up to my champs all around the world? It's your boy Champ Jones coming to you live, Hartford, Connecticut. We back home field. Last week we was in um, New Haven on Congress Avenue. Today we are on the north and on Main Street. Right between Capen and Pavilion, right across the street from the church. Here we go, we back. Like I said, we on Main Street, north end of Hartford. About to chat with the community, baby. I miss y'all, man. Lord knows, I had a long week. My week been goal-oriented action-packed feel me needless to say needless to say we here man thursday you know we chat every thursday every other thursday we on main street right next to the american legion so earlier i was spilling earlier i was spilling about habits habits cues and systems I felt like in our community, we need to change a lot of our habits, our cues, and our systems. What I mean by that, well, we could put cues before the habit. Certain cues in our community, <laughs> cer- you see JoJo, right? Certain cues in our community trigger reactions that we, unbeknownst to us, develop as habits. And once we develop those habits, collectively, it becomes a system of normality, right? So, I know a lot of us grew up in circumstances where cues determine whether shit you gonna live or not. That car that's coming down the street with the tents slowing down and shit, that's a cue to either, man, hey, yo, look, you feel me? Get out the way or... It could be a car passing by, but the cue that we pick up on the habit that we develop is a system of normality. So we get used to seeing certain things and it's a part of our normality. And I feel like as long as we normalize certain cues and keep certain habits, unbeknownst to us, it's going to be a part of our detriment. And one of the cues and reactions I know is... Like I said, we on Main Street, so y'all gonna hear this shit all the whole time. One of the main cues and habits we have is when we see each other, we feel threatened. And understandably, when you live in inner city communities and you have a normality of um, poverty, un- underemployment, unemployment, it'll cause um, reactions that's normalized. Like, if you're unemployed, You may resort to illegal drug sales. Illegal drug sales may also be a counterpart to robberies. And it's not meaning that you're a bad or horrible person. It's just how the system perpetuates uncomfortable predicaments for the means of your survival. You feel me? So even in that, it's one of the things where it's like every day, all day, we on edge. We feel like I could, it's, I know for a fact, speaking for myself, I know for a fact, speaking for myself, bro, when you work a job, you ever feel like, yo, damn, today I might get fired. And you may not even be doing nothing wrong. You may not feel like it's your fault, but it just inherited in us to feel like, yo, I'm fucking up. Or I'm the wrong one. Or I'm doing something bad. Or I'm, like I said, I'm about to get fired. And that pathology makes it hard to live, bro, because it's like you always on nights. And not a lot stem from in the household, not feeling good enough, not being, um, I want to say rewarded as far as like materialistically, but just congratulated. You feel me? And when you're constantly told what you're doing wrong or you're living in a society that has a narrative that you're always wrong or you're going to be wrong or you're doing wrong, or you're about to do wrong. You can't help but to feel like, yo, I'm doing wrong even if you're doing the right thing yeah y'all see the shirt thanks brother carl even when you're doing the right thing you feel like you're doing wrong right 
However, I found a semi-remedy, right, for the cues, habits, and systems. We have to understand the habits that a lot of us developed from birth till now as far as survival or means to living can be changed for the best. It just so happened we're one in the tie with a lot of our environments, a lot of our circumstances. It starts in the mind, though. You feel me? A lot of things that we process goes through our mind first. We internalize it. And I say that to say like this, right? If you start paying attention to, and being mindful of what you're going through, what you have control over, what you don't have control over. Hold on one second. Here you go, bro. That's for you to keep, bro. Right, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have a good night, bro. Yes, so, yes, sir. It's one of the things where we got to understand, like, I know everywhere somebody's struggling. I know every somewhere's going through some predicament that I'm going through. But what can I do and change? So you sit down, right? You get a pen and you get a pad. So at the top of the paper, you write what I will, what I would like to change about my life. When you write that, your brain is going to give you a million answers, and you write whichever one is emotionally connected to what you need to change. And when you write that down, you'll see a list. And when you see that list of things you want to change and you look at each one by one, each one you look at and stare at will give you ideas or suggestions on how you can accomplish that. And once you see those, you make a bubble. And in that bubble, you write, OK, let's say I want to change. Um, I want to change, hypothetically speaking, not being a morning person. So you put what I would like to change. I want to be a morning person. And when you circle this, when you make a circle in the bubble, you'll put. The things that come to mind, they say, right now, I want to be a morning person. What does that mean? Wake up early, listen to motivation videos, journal. How you doing, Poppy? Everything cool? Be safe, all right? Um, journal, plan my day out, be optimistic, Be have gratitude, be considerate. You'll get all these things, and once you see these words... And the energy that comes off reading them, you'll embrace it and you'll practice. Because a lot of us have the knowledge. A lot of us have the in intellect. We just have uh, inconsistency in practice due to the fact that we got to survive first. And it's hard to um, sometimes embrace one another when we got to think survival first. For example, I could be walking down the street. It had been plenty of times I done had my camera out walking down the street or trying to interview somebody. And little dudes walking like this. With, with the mask up, and I'm like, man, this shit looking crazy. And even in those moments, I had to realize, like, I'm, I'm, I'm psyching myself out. These little dudes, <laughs> these little dudes living their life. I can't, I can't buy into, you know, what I'm saying certain elements, bro, because it's only gonna mess us up. So we gotta change our habits, normalities, and systems. Good, bro. So other than that, I hope everybody is living well, living positive. You know, we out here, we got the champ code and conducts, we got the surveys, we got trauma information. So it's the power hour. Most importantly, man, I feel that most people need to do is start handing down information that they know can help an individual as far as saving their life. Not just saving for today. Even though saving today may be saving your life, man, but we got to start really, like, I got I just want to see more individuals, like, handcuffing these little dudes, man, taking them to football games, taking them to basketball games. Not saying nobody's doing it. It's a, a lot of people doing it, but it should be a, a, a system where we know, like, I right, bang, Monday through Tuesday, we got home here. Wednesday through Thursday. My boys over there got them. Friday through Saturday, my boys got on them Sunday with their parents. You know what I mean? Like, because quiet is kept, a lot of young dudes, they have been exposed to different levels of manhood and what it takes to be a man. So a lot of times when they come across men, it's not like I I could tell he, well, I ain't going to say he can't tell, but it's not like, oh, I've ripped you an elder. Because they be around dudes that's elder ages that act just like them. So we come down to your deliverance, your behavior, your behavior, your expectations, your standards, how you carry yourself. Because essentially, these little dudes is looking for somebody, man. 
these little sisters is looking for somebody, man. They want to see somebody they can model after and feel like, yo, I could talk to them on all levels. And I feel like who's better than inner city people that's adults? You feel me? We just got to get to overstanding that even aside from our bills, aside from our stresses. We should put some type of time into finding that child or those children that we know that could use um, some ears. And even if we know, all right, they don't want to listen, they hard-headed. All right, that's that's part of the process. What's more importantly, saving them children or having to deal with children that you could have helped that's probably going to harm your children later um, because they don't they didn't have someone there for them. You know what I mean? So we have to restructure our habits, restructure our cues, and restructure our systems, man. We have too many habitual circumstances and situations that play a detriment to our, our, our livelihood, man. It's no way we should feel like everywhere I go, every time I turn around, it's hunting season. Or I'm being hunted. Like, that, 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 that that's absolutely insane. And a piece of me, I overstand. It's a jungle. It's a concrete jungle, man. When it's hard to eat and hard to get anything, you got to go on the land. And the land may get real safari-like. But needless to say, man, only if we overstood the historical and economic factors that play a part in our detriment, we will overstand. It's not my brother's fault, and even though we had personal circumstances within the communities, but if you look at the bigger scale, the bigger picture, it all stems from us being in poverty, bro. Everybody trying to find a way. I wish I had my black facts. I had my black facts in Raven. Them joints. Blew all the way down Congress Avenue, man. I got to make some more, man. I, I felt bad. But needless to say, I internalized it like them facts that blew in the street, somebody going to need to pick them up and read them. You feel me? Like I said, we're right here on Main Street, man, right in front of American Legion, right in between Cape and the Pavilion. Power Hour. I just definitely, um... This shit looking like the Fast and the Furious, bro. Dudes be racing on Main Street. I think we need to put some more stop lights over this motherfucker. But this dog getting crazy. This, they flying. <laughs> Needless to say, man. I want dudes my age and older or younger. Needless to say, man. Find somebody you can build with. Because a lot of times, too, bro, we don't have outlets for men. We haven't normalized cues and habits and systems where dudes can be like, yo, you know what, bro, I'm, I'm going through it. It's more so like, you know what I'm saying? And we brush it up like not knowing, man. Any give home, man, that's a shooken soda, bro. Home ready to pop. You see that steer? Man, home ready to lose it, man. Somebody go talk to home, yo. We need to normalize circles. Even if it's football Sundays, get dudes your age and get dudes younger to you. Get dudes your age and get dudes younger to you. Bring them little dudes to the sports um, to the sports bar or like a restaurant. Show them how it is to be around grown men and just let them listen. Before you go in, you to be like, yo, listen, little bro. I'm bringing you here because I want you to, you know what I'm saying, see something different. Voice your opinion, but I'm going to need you just, just, just listen. Just fall back and be humble. Just listen and learn. Have them sit and hear how brotherhood here um, looks. You know what I'm saying? Camaraderie looks. You feel me? Planning the decisions. Letting them hear how structuring the budget sounds. We could tell these little dudes this all, all day. Uh, but unless they see it in real time, like how they see everything else in real time, it's like, ah, yeah, I hear you, want. Yeah, yeah, get the credit, get my credit right. Yeah, I hear you want until you t take it home like this. Yo, what's here? Go this right. Here go this two hundred. Let's go get your mother. I want you, I want her to sign you up for a credit card. Once you get your credit card, call me. Once you call me, I'm explain something to you and I'm gonna show you something. It's either gonna make you or break you from there. That's on you. Put them in real life circumstances to where they like, yo, uh, or OG or big bro or whatever. I don't know what to do. All right, come with me and I'll show you how you do it like this. It's no different than when they be like, yo, unk, how you flip this pack? Let me tell you, now, if you cut it like this, or do you put it like this, or you throw some water on it so it look like this on that, do you put it like this, you put it like that? It's no different. It's no different. It's no different. 
Lil' bro, when you go to school, you you enroll for this program. You sign up for these classes. Yo, if you do at least two, you figure you a junior now, it's not too late. Get on student camps, um, console. Um, ask can you do with this? Ask can you do a seminar? Ask can you do this outreach? Ask can you invite these speakers? Give them advice that you know that you would have been like, yo, if I was a kid in high school, I'd have loved to see that. Not only you giving them insight, but you're giving them an opportunity to be the first ever. A little dude to take your advice and be like, you know what, I'm right. He go to his family school, take your advice and do it like this. We can't continue to tell these little dudes, like, you feel me, make sure you put gloves on and put the mask up and, feel me, piss on your hands when you're done with all that. Like, we can't keep doing that, man. I overstand it, though. I really do. I really do. Oh, what up, man? Look, I got to go to a Raider game, man. Yeah, that was up, man. I love Unk, man. Facts. Unk, one of the dudes that seen me when I was at my worst. Facts. Ralph Gilliam, man. What up, Pop? Here, take this one of you for you. Who's this for? It's for you to keep, for you and your family. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Like I said, man, Unk seen me when I was at my worst. When I was living in both. What's going on? No, I don't, Pa. I don't. Unk seen me when I was living in Bose Park, working at the gas station, right? And peep fly shit. I was working at the gas it, it, for my Hartford people. I was living in Bose Park, right? Working in the meadows. And it had been times where I didn't either have to work too early or got off too late that I had to walk home. I would walk over the bridge. Hit Main Street, walk up Kensington. As I hit Kensington, hit Barber, go down Barber, walk up. Um, what's that? God damn it! What's that on? Um, at the corner, bruh. Cleveland. There you go. Cleveland to Barber. Walk up through Chappelle. Cut down the other block. Walk down tower through the woods where it's all type of dead deer, dead possums, wolves howling, all type of shit. Hit Blue Hills, walk down tower, take that right down Granby, take that left down Nam, cut that right down Berkeley, cut through the field, hit 47, open that door, go up to B2, go in there, take a shower and lay down. That was my life for years. And Unk used to always tell me, yo, you're going to be something, yo. He's like, yo, how old is you? What you doing? Man, you you you're gonna be something. Just stick to it, man. Just stay positive, man. So he definitely one of them people, man. Uncle, Uncle Rob, man, you know I love you, bro. I always know that, bro. You definitely I don't know what the what the F you saw in me. <laughs> but you saw something that now it's almost like a thank you, bro. Just thank you, bro. But that's what I'm saying, man. That that proves my point, yo. That's proving more to my point. We need a lot more of that. We need a lot more of, um, of our elders, our OGs, you know what I'm saying, our older males. Finding a young dude that may be working at Dunkin' Donuts, that may, may be working at the gas station like I was. I worked at, I worked at Dunkin' Donuts, Subway. I worked at Dunkin' Donuts, Subway, um, the gas station. Countless after school programs. I was a lunch monitor. Um, I was a security guard. I did so many jobs, yo, but what kept me going was just believing and knowing that something was gonna come out of it, yo, because I I can't explain it, but it was just something in me that I knew like I just gotta ride the wave. You feel me? Just in, internalize the, the struggle, internalize the adversity. And where I'm at now, I'm over grateful, but it's like I still got that mentality like I live in Bowes Park, bro. I still got that mentality like, my nigga, I got to make this rice with tuna and, and toast this bread and try to save some bread for the morning with the jelly. Like, like I still got that mentality. I'm trying to break it, but it's still there. I still got that mentality of, let me pay this whole bill today because I ain't about to go through not having gas, not having lights again. You know what I'm saying? Or cleaning the shit out the house, bleaching the floor because I don't want mice, not knowing the buildings are just old, like yeah man, like them days was different for me personally because I was by myself it was partners here and there, but needless to say man, them cold days and them 
cold early nights, mornings, whatever. Getting on the bus early morning. I'm talking about before the sun come up. Getting on the bus, coming home, and it's dark. Yo, I used to work at Target in Windsor, and it had been times where if I couldn't find a ride or I missed the bus, I used to walk home from Target in Windsor to Bowes Park. How? Walk down Kennedy Road all the way down till you get damn near near them train tracks and you get near, um, what's that? Downtown Windsor, then troop it down and go from there. How y'all doing? Talking with the people, mama, just about solutions, community issues, and how we can get better. What are you getting for my? Yeah. But that's all we doing. How you living, ma? I'm okay. You cool? I live right there. I got to move, though. Oh, word, word, word. You might lie on me somewhere, but... All right. As long as you get somewhere where you feel safe, right? I'm going to be fine. Oh, okay, God, okay. Me, baby. Oh, man. Ain't nobody better. Y'all be safe, all right? All right, man. That's for you to keep. No, I'm going to check this out. Oh, yep, yep. But yeah, man. That's what engagement and outreach about, man. When I'm out here, I don't look at nobody like strangers. I look at everybody like cousins, uncles, aunts, and you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say that's guaranteed safety. We still in Hartford. But for me, be out with my heart, how I feel, I ain't saying my heart like courage. I mean heart like love. It's just I look at everybody like family, bro. Because like I said, there was individuals who ain't know me from a can of paint, man, that just believed in me. Gave me opportunity. And there's a lot of these young dudes that need that, man. I don't care how mean they look, how wild they talk. They need opportunities, bro. They need somebody to be like, little bro, come here, yo. You feel me? Yo, you ever been to this? You ever did this? You ever read this? Give them something excited about. Because that Q, when they see you, that Q is, oh, I see big bro. I'm about to learn something. I'm about to get some knowledge. I'm about to get some love. What up, G? That Q a develop a habit. Now we got children with habits to know, y'all. I'm about to learn. I'm about to get some love. I'm about to eat. I'm about to chill. That develops a system. I don't want to go outside. I don't really. I'm straight, bro. That's going to run the risk of me not being able to get with Big Bruh. Brick Bruh say he's taking me to the Patriots game. Big Bruh say he's taking me to the Giants game. I'm going to the Steelers game. I know if I go with y'all dudes tonight, that shit going to run the risk. No, I'm straight, bro. Touch me, though. I'll see y'all when I come back. Come on, bro. Hey, yo, no, I came to do it, yo, this weekend. We supposed to be playing kids from the South in the basketball. And then after that, the kids that went that play the kids in the West in the basketball. And then after that, the winner, we supposed to go play New Britain. And then we got to travel the team because Big Bruh and, Unk and OG have put together this. I know y'all get what I'm saying, bro. I'm getting mad. I'm trying to relax, but I'm getting mad as hell. I don't think a lot of people look in these little dudes' eyes when they talk. I think they just, you know, you know, men, like, it's hard for us to make eye contact unless we dead ass serious. Other than that, it's hard because a lot of us deal with certain emotions and certain things, so it's hard to really, you know what I'm saying? Menina's to say, when you look in these little dudes' eyes, man, their face may say, but their eyes are saying, yo, help me, yo. Please save me. Please hug me. Tell me you love me, yo. I'm hungry. Feed me. You got some old clothes on me. I'll, it's old to you, but it's new to me. I could fit it. That shit, three size look bigger than home. I could fit it. That's my size. Home is small. You are extra large. No, I could fit it, bro. That's Polo. I could fit it. This little dudes out here, yo. When they see your car, they not jumping in it just to chill or hear music. Big bro, you don't know you just saved my life. You took me out the hood. Yo, I'm well, bring you back. I'm dropping you back off where I picked you up at. No, I'm going home.
Yo, that shit crazy, man. I just wish more people overstood these little dudes, man. I really, really, really did, yo. Here, bro. Keep that for yourself, all right? Mm-hmm. You can make a difference, man. Stop judging our little dudes, man. Some of these little dudes that got weapons on them that'll shoot the whole block up, they ticklish still. These is our sons, nephews. I'm about to close this down a little early, bruh. I need to go get me something to eat. And needless to say, sometimes enough is enough, you feel me? You don't got to oversaturate it. We usually do the power hour. Right now, just feeling like, you know, I just need to go chill for a second. Needless to say, man, love these in the young sisters. I would never exclude the young sisters. Never. Ever. 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 Needless to say, man. These young dudes, man. They're thirsting for you. Brother. They thirsting for you, OG. They thirsting for you, gangster. They thirsting for you, old hat. Is you gonna feed them? Stay positive, stay motivated, stay real. One.